I was showing you guys welcome back to another brand new video. So in this video, I want to go over this card right here in front of your guys' screen. Not a brand new card, but a card that essentially nobody plays in this format, right? And for good reason. Lots of cards activate when things get destroyed, especially the Fire King cards, right? And that was kind of like the trend going into this brand new meta of like, you know, the new set coming out and Fire King was supposed to be the most dominated, quote unquote, tier zero deck. But as the format progressed, obviously we know now, and you guys can watch my past video on me talking about the cash tier cards as well. Now that the format has kind of settled in, we've realized that it's not Fire King everywhere. And also this card is pretty good into some of the new variations that the uh, modern Snake Eye decks are playing, right? Especially the Cash Tier Snake Eye deck that I previously went over in my last video. So if you guys haven't seen that yet, it's literally the video, uh, two videos before this, literally um, about, you know, fully about Snake Eye's Cash Tier. You guys can see it in the title very self-explanatory so let's go ahead and talk about why i think this card is going to be pretty good into the next um the next meta shift right so this isn't some like new set or something revolutionary or anything like that i just think as the format evolves this card could essentially be very good with how the format is looking right so let's go ahead and talk about some of the applications that on why i think it's good and let's talk about some other niche niche applications uh as well right so let's go ahead and go over this exact replay. And this is going to be a replay involving some of the Cash Tira Snake Eyes um, combos, right? So some of the more popular ways to actually use the Cash Tira cards alongside the Snake Eye cards is something like this, right? So let's go ahead and give our or give an example, right? And this is going to be dealing with uh, Cash Tira Unicorn and Snake Eye Ash, a very generic opening that I would say is pretty standard uh, for the most part, right? I, I don't think... Uh, if your opponent draws these two cards together is anything crazy so let's go ahead and talk about how we actually deal with this situation how ghost ogre actually plays a big part into this situation as well right so as we can start here now i'm going to show you i'm going to add a few hand traps to my hand just to like talk about how all the hand traps here kind of interact so let's say they open this type of hand right so typically what are they doing very obvious right normal su or special summon cash tier unicorn activate the effect now since we know that they're going to be playing cash tier snake eyes and let's assume they make the right play and not assume that our opponent is bad you're probably not going to be hand trapping this and as we view ghost mortar and moonlit chill i want to view that in the same light as we view ghost ogre because i don't think ghost Ghost Ogre is ever a card that you can play standalone, very similar to how Ghost Mourner is, and even something like Ash Blossom is, right? So let's think about these cards in pairs. So uh, Cashier Unicorn is going to go ahead and resolve um because you know typically the right play is to just not use it here i do it in reverse by accident but yeah uh cashier unicorn activates the effect nothing will happen then snake eye ash will come down and let's say let's say we use our first layer of interruption which is going to be our effect negate right whether that's valor whether that's impermanence and typically what comes next after this is a standard build would either have ash blossom in their hand or ghost mourner right so usually if we're pairing cards like um effect Baylor, we usually have it with ash blossom or we have it with ghost mourner if you look at any of the more modernized snake eyes deck that's typically going to be the situation right but let's go ahead and talk about how ghost mourner and ash blossom actually doesn't really do anything right here right so we're at this game state where Snake Eye Ash has just been negated, Unicorn has resolved, and Birth is on field. What they're going to do next, actually, is they're going to go ahead and make IP Mascarina, and then reborn this Cash Hero Unicorn, right? As you guys can see here, Ash Blossom actually has nowhere to be activated at this point, nor does Ghost Mourner. So they're going to pass on just this, right? Essentially just um, IP with Unicorn. And if they want to keep going, then they can play around Nibiru. But most players are just going to end right here because it plays around almost every single hand trap. And this is a little bit suspect, right? Because if they get passed right here and you don't play Ghost Ogre, you're a little bit screwed, right? So what's going to happen is once they pass turn, uh, once they actually use Cash Tier of Birth, you can just actually Ghost Ogre this. And they will just pass on IP with nothing on field, right? It also um, stops the chance that they, you know, uh, go into Promethean Princess and summon back to Ash and do anything further, right? Now, I know Ghost Mourner can stop that and Ash Blossom could potentially stop the Snake Eye Ash as well. But there's no guarantee that they even go for that line. So Ogre is a very nice cleanup on some of the ways that they can play around the Bureau as well. Because they cannot play around this Ghost Ogre in this situation, right? So I think that's one perfect example why Ghost Ogre is a very good pair into the new snake eye ash plus cash tier combos right 
Now, up next, let's go ahead and revisit an old combo, actually. Um, and I think this is pretty interesting as well, right? And this is going to be our very, you know, super standard as everyone has been seeing this entire format. And that Snake Eye Ash was Diabell Star, right? So let's go ahead and use a simple hand trap on a Snake Eye Ash. And typically, uh, we'll have like a Ghost Mourner followed up. But let's go ahead and do an example with Ghost Ogre, actually, right? So Snake Eye Ash will activate the effect. We'll use Valor or Imperm, either one. And then next up, we'll use Diabell Star, right? Now, funny enough, you could actually Ghost Ogre this Diabell Star, and a lot of people think like, oh, why would you Ghost Ogre this? It's going to resolve, right? And it, like, Ghost Ogre doesn't negate the effect. Funny enough, this doesn't actually lead anywhere. So if you Ghost Ogre this Diabell Star, sure, they'll set their original, but now their original actually doesn't do anything. Because if you summon out uh, Snake Eyes Poplar, Poplar can't, you know, get another original because you already used it. So they'll get Divine Temple, but then Divine Temple doesn't actually do anything because you don't have any cards to keep going, actually, right? But if you summon Snake Eyes Oak, all you really do is make SP Little Knight because you actually can't really do anything. And it's the same exact thing as if you mourned the the D Bell Star. Because if you mortar the D Bell Star, they'll make SP. If you ogre this card, guess what? They're gonna do the exact same thing and end on SP, right? So the Ghost Ogre is an extremely great pair in similarity with Ghost Mortar and Moonlit Shell. At the same time, it stops the brand new combos that play around more, a lot of cards in the Kashtira uh, Snake Eyes deck, right? Kashtira Snake Eyes has a very great way of playing around a lot of the, you know, Ash Blossoms and the Ghost Mourners, uh, but they can't play around Ghost Ogre. So I do think that while it has applications against the newer Snake Eyes deck, it also has applications against people who don't play Kashtira cards as well, right? So I think that makes it a very good card. It's good against the old older build it's good against the newer builds as well some other things we can talk about this card is that a lot of fire king players right now are actually cutting fire king sanctuary so that's another thing that you can do you, um, obviously you cannot you know ghost ogre this but you can ghost ogre the fire king island and a lot of players right now aren't even playing that card or even siding it out post side you can watch so many deck profiles of fire king players and they all are doing that themselves and if you're a fire king player you've definitely heard that or do that yourself right so you know you can punish them there but this is kind of like a maybe but you know it is an option because people are actually doing this Another thing that you can actually do is you can stop Blazing Cartesia with this card. Now, if you guys don't know, Branded Cards has been, you know, gaining a lot of popularity recently, especially with Pac playing it at, at his one of his local regionals. And people are fiending to play this deck. I've been seeing it left and right. Very popular on Dueling Book as well. Ghost Ogre and Cartesia is very, very solid um, into that deck. And I think it's one of the cards to actually stop it, right? So let's say like they activate something like a fusion deployment and then they summon out their Cartesia and then they normal summon like an Alibur, right? Now at this point, it's you pretty much cannot Veiler or Impermit because if you do, You'll, you're hand looping yourself, right? Because they're just going to chain their Cartesia, uh, get Alibur off the field and resolve their card. But if you have Ghost Ogre, guess what? You can Ghost Ogre the Cartesia and that's super good as well, right? So applications to the branded matchup that, you know, haven't, you know, people have not been playing Ghost Ogre. So they've been walking away free by using their free Cartesias. Um, an extremely good card against uh, branded, I think, right? Also Quem as well. Um, then next up, some other applications it's really good against the voices voice deck uh barrier of the voices voice is one of their main cards one of their main ways to get started low grabs this card so it's essentially like you're stopping low but you don't lose to Swarvis, right because if you valor or imperm the low they could have soravis uh, but if you just ghost ogre the barrier of the voices voice that's it they're done and this card is also used once per turn they can't just play another one and also Last but not least, Flunderies, you can hit the map. So, you know, it has a lot of applications against all the other decks. Voices Voice, Branded, Flunderies, very good against the Cashier Snake Eyes deck by the combo that I just mentioned. So I think this card is uh, pretty solid. I, I do think that it has tons of applications and it could be extremely good into this next meta shift that we're having, right? Obviously, we don't know when the ban list is coming out and I've been waiting every day for a ban list to happen. But if there is no ban list and you are attending something like YCS Guadalajara, YCS Raleigh, I think this card is pretty solid and you guys should give it a try. So if you guys made it this far, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and a sub, and I'll see y'all in the next one.